Hello, and welcome back, and in today's episode, we're going to continue the locations with Morbell. In the depths of the Loren Force lies Morbell, the once bustling coal city that has fallen from grace. During the 18th and 19th centuries, it held major strategic significance, which caused the population of Morbell to quadruple and even surpassed Lachavin. This trend did not last when the growing population, deforestation, and environmental damage caused a vast amount of Loren forest and the city to be in inhabitable. Population killed hundreds of residents. Moreover, the water sources were tainted with dangerous chemicals that made several thousands others fall ill. The events led to a huge uproar in which many supported the Nature Preservation Fund. The king decided to act, seeing the public opinion was turning against him. The metro area of Lauren was declared an environmental protection zone. Subsequently, the factories and mines were shut down. This is regarded as the first environmental victory in Swordland. Nowadays, Morbell is a forgotten city, devoid of hope. Unemployment is high, and people are leaving to find a better life. Well, the, at least the environment's alright. <laughs> Morna. Morna is the regional capital of the Loren region. It is the largest and most industrialized city in Loren. Founded by industrialists but of the Renan aristocracy, it was later taken over by the nationalization plan by King Edmund. Morna began to supply many cities with huge forestry industry it developed. The timber here was even sold abroad to countries like Vagsland or Lespia. Today, Morna shows clear advantages and disadvantages of the industrialization period. While the big companies offer relatively good wages, they also cause a lot of pollution and damage to nature in the area. This has drawn the attention of the Nature Preservation Foundation, which frequently organizes strikes and protests against the biggest corporations who neglect the environment. The Ninnum Mining Group, Woodland Forestry, and Swordish Grid Corporations employ a large portion of the populace in the city. The city and these huge corporations suffer from a logistical issue. The nearly 40% of all goods from Morna are exported overseas, but there is no nearby port to ship the goods away. This forces people to travel to Holsword and then to Conorit, creating logistical delays and costs. The forests and the wildlife surrounding the city is praised by many. The fact that a city is large and pollutant forces people who want to enjoy nature to go to Morbell or Vessord. Research also suggests that artifacts from the migration period are underneath certain parts of the city. These are revealed during new construction projects and cause delays due to excavation taking place. These are two reasons people go to Morna. It's either to get a job or to make one. Nurbel. Nurbel is the smallest and poorest city in the Nagar's region. It is located at the skirts of the Canadier Mountain. Centuries past, this town used to be positioned on a very important trade route that went towards the old capital of the Marquean Empire. Narbel used to heavily benefit from this trade, and not quite enriched from it and got quite enriched from it. In the past hundred years, the city experienced a massive economic down economic downturn. As most of the attention of the governments in Swordland went more inland, <coughs> many rural trade hubs like Narbel were forgotten. The previous governments were interested to invest in cities with a lack of natural resources. A recent discovery of natural gas resources in Narbel drastically changed the situation. A large investment from the Gossam Corporation boosted economic growth. The city still harbors large population or poverty stricken residents who increasingly had to rely on farming and hunting for self-sufficiency. The situation also led to starvation, which became a big problem in the 1920s, but was quickly solved when the state intervened and subsidized bread and rice to Narbel. Ribble The mountainous beauty that is Ribble is one of the few majority bloodish settlements in Swordland. Initially, it was a small village founded in Old Bloods, but the entire village transformed into a town when the first iron ore deposits were found a millennium after. Uh, throat. Before the discovery, people here primarily lived off farming and animal industry. It was hardly known that the town existed because it held no significance to power and authority. As a result, Ribble has not seen much conflict. What gave Ribble significance was the discovery of iron ore and in the 19th century the setting of the Bergia Steel Corporation that heavily invested in the city. 
Dozens of steel mills were erected to utilize the resource, which at first was sold to the state. Later, surplus steel was exported to other countries. Bloodish people here are mostly employed by storage corporations. Normally, this wouldn't be an issue, but the horrendous working conditions cause underlying ethnic tensions to rise. I'll be back in just a moment. Um, I am back. Ribery barely gained the city status in 1950, mainly due to the taxes it could pay in comparison to other smaller towns. If the city has anybody to thank, it is the tourists who often visit the famous historic caves of Antiria, site underneath the city itself. It provides the local great locals great economic opportunity. Many rent out their houses or event sell property to make a lot of money. This city is also very special due to the fact that it can see the gulf clearly from it, and is the only city that can provide that, except for Lachivin. Many don't like to swim in the cold waters, but very much enjoy the scenic hillside houses for relaxation. Some locals have been more vocal about the shift in the tradition and life of Ruberi, but that doesn't change the fact that without the tourism, the city would be very much lost. The real estate industry also began to invest heavily in the outskirts of the urban area in the hopes of cashing out of the tourist influx. Ribery is beautiful and worth a visit, the, vocal the locals say that. If you have been to Ribery once, then you have been to Ribery a million times. One of the famous Ribereans was Geralt of Ribery, the famous winemaker of Elory. Sarna Sarna, a city situated within the region of Bergia shares its borders with the nation of Lesbia. It is a diverse city, home to a small, culturally rich enclave of Wessacks and Lesbians. The city also serves as a gateway to the natural wonders of the southernmost reaches of the Maris Forest, which extends northeastward all the way to Gessord. Local folklore tells of the forest giant that has dwelled here since the first century, though city dwellers often dismiss this as mere myth. The city center of Sarna presents a labyrinth network of streets. This organic, rather than planned, layout lends the city a unique charm when viewed from above. However, the complexity of the street network can result in significant traffic and congestion, particularly during rush hour. As a solution, the mayor has promoted cycling as a preferred mode of transportation. An important historical shift occurred five decades ago when Hornwalt initiated an experiment rendering Sarna and the city of Morlitia at completely tax-exempt. Contrary to initial expectations, the creation of the free trade zone proved highly successful, cat catalyzing sustained economic prosperity for Sarna. Oh good, we have, a st we have an economically stable city! Nice, we actually have, have one! Woo! The city of Uzeren is one of the few major majority bloodish cities in Swordland. It is located at a sh very strategic area bordering Rumberg, Willen, and Lespia. The city also has a large population of Wessex living at the west side. The notorious Gumrin military outpost is located next to the border and currently assists the high security border crossing. Economically, Wuzerin is reliant on the agricultural industry. Many bloodish citizens are very experienced herders who sell high quality products to the market of Uzerin, which is transported towards the major trade hubs. The city also has several cheap motels that provide hospitality service to pilgrims who are traveling to Deir from the neighboring countries. The locals here call the region Bludia instead of Bergia. Several na nationalistic bloodish groups reportedly declared their support for the bloodish freedom front. This upsets many swords and has also triggered the government to assist it a 24-hour special riot force that was activated in the 1930s. Velgen Velgen is regarded as one of the most important cities of the East. Its rich multicultural history is admired among historians and sociologists. Moreover, it is the main logistical artery that links the liberal region of Gruni to Lespia. The river delta and the warm climate result in very fertile ground for fruit agriculture. Therefore, Velgen is known to be, a prime, be the primary citrus producer in the country, surpassing even deer. The city also has the second largest hydroelectric power plant in the country. It was built with the help of the Lesbian um, engineers three decades ago. 
Once upon a time, the city was nicknamed the Lachavin of the East, but the tor that torch has slowly been passed on to Binfi. The immigration, triggered by the economic crisis, caused a huge change to the urban society. The city became poorer and living standards worsened, so many moved away to find better prospects. This caused the Lespian investments being retracted out of the city, which caused further unemployment the city couldn't recover from. During the thousand year existence as a city, Volgan was controlled by several different countries and people. The tribe of Volgs were the founders of the city, later it switched hands to the Markians, Lespians, and the Swords. Most of the ethnic Volgs still live in the city he le left and settled to the recent founded Hobland. Valgos, while the thousands of Lespians le who lived under the Markian Empire also decided to settle in their newly independent country. Nowadays, only a few of the old Volg and Lespian traditions are being practiced by Sorda citizens. However, some ideas, like freedom and equality that form through living together, have continued throughout generations. The Sword The city of the Sword is a great location for camping, fishing, and jogging. Several festivals are held here, as the forest is within walking distance to the city, so attendants can easily travel between the two. The seasonal attention to Visord is great news to some residents, but an annoyance to others who appreciate the peace and quiet nature provides. The controversial Boy Scouts organization is headquartered in Visord and organizes its bi-monthly forest survival lessons. It has thousands of juvenile members who learn survival skills in different challenging courses. Historically, the city is one of the ancient settlements that were settled even before a migration period. The Markian epic myth, a martyrin, um, mentions dragon-like reptiles creatures that shaped the Earth's crust. The cliffs next to this sword were even named after the myth. The epic details that the fire from Mardunes had melted the dirt and rock and then the creatures used wind to cool it to form. Even the historians, it is the most unique tales that has remained from the ancient civilizations that we know little of. Woo! Those are our cities. Now let's go over to countries. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go, Federation of Anacurian Isles. The Federation of Anacurian Isles, often referred to as Anacara, is a federal republic comprised of archipelagos strategically situated between the continent of Mercopa and Contenna. Its vibrant capital, Pada Doi, acts as the nation's political and economic hub. The current leader, President Atiya Shikra, is a direct descendant of the legendary pirate queen Ishani Shikra, who is celebrated for a crucial role in the pivotal battle of the Sirens against Katinan and Arcasian colonial forces. Anarika's history is deeply entrenched in seafaring culture, reaching back to the era of Arcasian and containing colonization. The indigenous islanders, famed for their formidable naval skills and piracy tactics, valiantly resisted the colonial powers. The, na the year 1944 marked a decisive turning point in, Ar in Arca's history, when the merchant nation island, under mounting pressure from both Arcasia to the east and the United Federation to the west, united to form the modern federation of Anarchan Isles. The governments of Anarcha is a unique amalgamation of democratic governments, pirate codes, and merchant republic values reflecting its rich and diverse past. An established caste system, while fostering income disparity, has been instrumental in the formation and functioning of the modern government. This caste system is deeply woven into the fabric of our Enrikean society, from the working class inhabiting artificial islands to the affluent living in the archipelago's natural landscapes. Laws are strict, stringently enforced, with capital punishment meted out through democratic voting for a broad range of criminal activities. Even economically, Anraka is a powerhouse in the areas of sea exploration, resource extraction, naval technology, with a particular emphasis on aircraft carriers. Its robust economy is fueled by extensive offshore oil and gas extraction. The nation maintains expansive trade relations globally, with particularly strong ties the Confederation of York Trallis, a formidable isolationist power situated in the South Pole. Despite its history and challenges, Anraka has emerged as a beacon of resilience and innovations. Its institutions shaped by piracy, adventures, spirit, and a unique blend of democratic principles have fostered an environment of dynamic growth and prosperity. Enrico's education system, for instance, places strong emphasis on maritime studies and naval engineering, nurturing a new generation of seafarers and innovators. Furthermore, Enrico's commitment to environmental sustainment 
adaptability is evident in its impressive marine conservation efforts. The government has implemented the comprehensive policies to protect its rich marine biodiversity and has pioneered research in sustainable offshore resource extraction. The commitment has not only preserved Enrica's natural beauty, but also contributed to its growing reputation as a leader in environmental stewardship. I don't think this nation is mentioned like once in the whole story, and this is like a long. This is this is a lot of information, and we have all of these. So um, a lot of these, a lot of these aren't even mentioned once in the actual thing. So, um, <laughs> but hey, more lore is more lore. <laughs> The Confederacy of York tra Trellis, situated at the globe's southernmost continent, Wilkes, is a unique- I don't know if that continent is even really mentioned- is a unique sovereign state celebrated for its awe-inspiring arctic landscape and innovation, innovative approach to governments and so society. The nation is led by an elder overseer, Renji Wuramutu. It is a confederacy of city-states, each preserving a degree of autonomy, yet united under the auspicious of foreign policy and defense. The Arctralis capital city, Yarvia, antipathizes the nation's inventive spirit and commitment to sustainable living. Built beneath the frost-laden surface, Yarvia uh, languages the region's geothermal energy for power. This comprehensive subterranean infrastructure enables Yark Trellis to sustain a flourishing civilization amidst an otherwise inhospitable Arctic environment. Yark Trellis' isolationist and protectionist stance, although distinctive in global geopolitics, does not preclude the nation from nurturing essential international relationships. A key illustration of this is its strong trade partnership with Enrica. B bartering Yark Trellis rich mineral resources for Anarchican technological products. Despite past territorial conflicts with the southern nations of Xena and Rika, Yark Trellis persistently strikes a careful balance between safeguarding its national interests and fostering cooperative international relations. The nation's technological mastery is highlighted by its production of highly advanced terrain vehicles, gas powered high pressure weapons, and harpoons. Innovations driven by the necessity to nig navigate and survive the harsh Arctic environment. Your Trellis advanced balloon technology utilized for both transportation and scientific exploration is considered unrivaled. Another significant achievement is the nation's advancements in artific artificial agricultural farming, demonstrating their neutrality and ingenuity in overcoming the challenges posed by the Arctic climate. The rapid advancements of Yark Trellis can be attributed to the nation's unique location and historical circumstances. The harsh environment and lack of traditional farming lands prompted an early focus on scientific research and technological innovation, particularly in the fields of agriculture and transportation. The confluence of environmental pressure and the Confederation's, um, Confederacy's political structure, which encourages competition and innovation among its city-states, has repelled Yark Trellis progress in these sectors. Republic of Kirat. Kirat officially recognized the Republic of Kirat is an island nation located in the heart of the Edesian Sea. <laughs> like, look at this! Look at what we're talking about! This is just some island over here that I don't know if is, is ever mentioned. Like, how does this have so much details? I'm so imp I'm just so impressed. I've played through this entire thing three times, and I've never seen- I've never gone through all this detail. Like, oh, it's so, so much. It consists of three main main land masses, Curatium, Antium, and Endrium. Along, along the numerous smaller islands, corrupt is... Uh, corrupt. Uh, are they corrupt? Because that would be funny, because it's, you know, corrupt, uh, corrupt, corrupt, you know, it's clip. I don't, I don't know, I'm being dumb. Corrupt is governed by a par parliamentary republic with elements of direct democracy. Its capital city, Constantium, 
Constantinople is the first. I, I almost read it as Constantinople for some reason. I'm dumb, I know. With the current leader being Chancellor Innes Adrium. Historically corrupt, is believed to have been the epicenter of legendary Antisean civilization. However, concrete evidence regarding the civilization's existence remain, remains elusive. Recent scientific findings suggest the presence of advanced megacities on Crete. Crete. Creatium as early as 5th millennium BH. In pursuit of further evidence of submerged cities, scientists exploring. Mm. Scientists and explorers are currently engaged in extensive undersea explorations. From the 3rd to 9th century, the islands were fragmented into eight smaller kingdoms that were perpetually at war. These kings were later unified by Constanta the Great and into an elective monarchy with Constium as, as its base. Starting from the 11th century, Kirat transformed into a critical trade hub within the Aetian Sea. This strategic importance attracted the attention of neighboring empires, leading to numerous attempted invasions. Kirat boasts a history of impressive defensive victories, successfully resisting powerful forces such as North Zeans, Rizians, Dids, um, and Marcians. Despite numerous successful defenses against Valgos Empire, Karut eventually became a Volgish territory in the 17th century. Valgish Karutium evolved into a significant economic powerhouse and served as a naval and trade operations center for the empire until 1853. Inspired by the revolutions in Markopia, Karutin nationalists revolted and established the independent Republic of Karut after a series of brutal wars against the Empire. Since its inception, the Republic has maintained a policy of diplomatic neutrality, the seizure of Volgish imperial assets in the island, and a series of successful economic policies led to an economic boom on the island. Karut has not partic participated in a war since 1853, pursues an active foreign policy including spearheading peace-building processes worldwide. It is a founding member of the Alliance of Nations and hosts the organization's headquarters on international territory in Constantium. Kirat ranks as one of the world, so it's Belgium, the world's most developed countries, boasting the highest nominal wealth per adult. It is known for its strong record on civilian rights, political life, and equality of life. The nation has gained international renown as a destination for exiles and political refugees. Exiles sounds like Belgium, yeah, yeah, and serves as a center of offshore banking. Karut has a member of the Antian Free Trade Association (AFTA), the Organization for Macopian Economic Development (OMEC), and is a founding member of the Alliance of Nations. Holy Federation of Free City. The Free Cities, officially recognized as the Holy Federation of Free Cities of Faz and Nefez, constitute a federation of theocratic city-states. Its governmental operations are directed from Jathles by the Devin, an elected council composed of Jastnurist religious leaders. The country doesn't possess a singular head of state, instead is typically represented by a divine speaker chosen by the Devin. The present divine speaker is Andre. And Jelfels is the capital city. Although the Dasnur Sanctuary Authority in, in Jathlis has its roots in early in Naturia, it was only in 1921 through the War City Treaty that the Free Cities emerged as an independent state. This evolution can be traced back to the Holy League, which governed the region of present-day Solmor between the 17th and 19th centuries. In the chaotic aftermath of the 19th century Moridian Wars, which fragmented the Republic of Moridia into warring factions, the coastal region of Faz proclaimed its independence. Assisted by the Holy League, Fazd emerged victorious from the brutal independence war. However, the Holy League disbanded due to religious discord within two years. The dissolution led to this Durst, Dur, Das Nurst Brotherhood gaining supremacy and unifying the numerous small states that declared independence in Faz, and along with Nefaz Grand Canyon under a single government. The free cities are governed by a unique theocratic system. Each city-state is managed by an elected council of local religious leaders who enjoy significant autonomy. Even though the country operates as a das nurse theocracy, it is home to millions of individuals adhering to at various faiths and implemented an open border policy. 
The Free Cities and Arcacia share close ties since the inception of the former, with Arcacia considered its closest ally. Over the Free Cities, primary adversary is the nurse Republic of Durdia. Known for its robust economy and commendable civil rights record, the Free Cities nonetheless experience restricted political freedoms. Six of near T-12 holy cities are situated within the Free Cities, transforming the region into a hub for dis das nurus faith. The Free Cities attract millions of tourists annually due to their rich religious and cultural significance. It is a member of the Arcasian Treaty Organization and the Organization for Mercopian Alliance uh, Economic Development, and it is a part of the Alliance of Nations. Republic of Quinal. The Republic of Quinal, commonly known as Quinal, is a strategic situated country, predominantly on the Xenon Peninsula in northern Xena, with a minor segment extending into the southeast Mercopa. To the north, Quinal shares borders with Morella and the Free Cities, which it is flanked by the Sea of Nim in the west. Nikis is the, in the, to the south, and the Antian Sea to the east. The Quinal is unique for being the only Zen member of the Arcasian Treaty Organization, ATO. The nation's political framework is a parliamentary republic, with the current Prime Minister, Riza Nagoba, Nagoda, in office. Its capital, Mosestel Pol, is the nation's most populous city. Ancient civilizations such as Zenili, Gurtik, and the North Zian Empire once thrived in the area known today as, Zenal, as Quinal. The 8th century saw the first wave of Zenali immigration. Initially arriving as raiders and mercenaries at the service of the North Zian Empire, they eventually established themselves as the ruling class of the Zian region. Quinal's religious landscape was profoundly reshaped in the 11th century, when most invaders propagated Zarnism, a religion that is still predominant today. The Marcians, during the Great Invasion of Mercopa, managed to seize most of the peninsula's northern territories. However, their advance was brought to a halt as Mustapal in 1582 by the Musser Empire, thereby concluding the 29-year war. During the period between the 17th and 19th centuries, the Valgos Empire asserted its dominance over Quinal eastern coast and northern territories. However, a buddy conflict in 1821 resulted in Quinali regaining control over these regions. The dissolution of the Moser Empire in 1905 paved the way for the Quinali independence movement, which subsequently led to the establishment of the Republic of Quinal. Under the leadership of the first president, a series of reforms transformed Quinal into a united parliamentary republic a significant military power. In 1945, the country became a member of ATO, as a regional powerhouse situated at a geographical crucial location. Quinal has faced allegations of multiple sabotage incidents by Morella and the Free Cities. Boasting a large economy, Quinal is known for its above-average civil rights and commendable political freedoms. Zaranianism is the predominant religion among the majority of the population. Quinal's international affiliation include being a founding member of the Zenon Economic Correction, XEC, and a member of the Alliance of Nations. But I think this is a good time to go ahead and end this episode, and we'll continue through with the nations in the next one. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, Peace.